Hi, I'm Steve Chater with TCT Property Management Services, and we are the resource for people building financial security with real estate. And today, this is part of our TCT Investor Series, and what I want to talk about is the five advantages to real estate investing. And when we look at this, what we're looking at here is the safe and secure way to create financial freedom. We're not talking about taking big risks in order to get advantages. These are safe, secure strategies to make things work. So I want to start with the concept of financial independence. And what do we actually mean by that? And I'm going to define it this way. You have enough cash flow to fund your life without working for the money. Not just your expenses, but everything that you want in your life without having to work for the money. Let's just call that passive income. Some people call it mailbox money. So as we look at this, and let's just take a typical example, a typical investment example. And um, what I've been told by stockbrokers over the years is that in, if I put my money in the stock market, I'm going to make between 6 and 10% return on investment. So let's just go right in the middle and say 8% return on investment. And let's say that I'm going to save $10,000 a year, and I'm just going to continue to put it in and get my 8% return on investment. Well, you can see that over a 10 year period of time, you have actually put in $100,000 into the savings account. And every year it grows. The end of the first year, you're $10,800. And into the second year, you're almost $22,000. And so 10 years later, you now have grown your $100,000 by $46,000. That's awesome. Okay, a great return on investment. In fact, an 8% return on investment. But what if we did something different instead? So let's just make some assumptions. Let's just say that in year two, you saved 10,000 the first year, 10,000 the second year. And so now you take your, your $20,000 uh, $20, that you saved and you go buy yourself a $250,000 rental property with 10% down. So 10 years later, what's that gonna look like? Well, property appreciates at about 4% per year. Um, I'm the author of the book Hold and one of the co-authors and when we did the research we found out that over the last 40 to 50 years the average property appreciation is 4%. So let's use that. Let's also assume that your income and your expenses continue to increase just along with the rate of inflation about 2%. And so what does that look like? Okay, well number one in the total annual income, you'll see on this chart, year number one and year number 10. So my total income in year number one is 18000 almost $19,000. By the time we get to year number 10, I'm getting about $21,000. Why? Because the income went up with, with the inflation rate. Look at my expenses. My sp expenses did the same. The good thing about it is the tenant's paying for them for me. Because if you look at the next line, I have a positive cash flow in year number one. It's only $774. That's not a lot. But 10 years later, it's 2800 bucks. Nothing to sneeze at. So my property value now went from $260,000. Now remember, we paid two fifty dollars for it. And at the end of the first year, it's now worth about two sixty. dollars In year 10, it's worth $370,000. My equity now has grown from $39,000 to $192,000. My loan balance, which was two hundred and twenty, dollars went down to $177,000. Again, the tenant paid that down for me. And so my total profit, if I sold this property at the end of 10 years, is $133,000. What did we have before? $46,000. That's a 21% return on investment, not an 8% return on investment. Now, imagine if what you did then is you continue to do that and you continue to save your $10,000 a month. Because all we did was take your savings and turn it into another asset. Well, property appreciation, I got 110000 The tenant actually gave me $44,000 in equity buildup, which is about the same as what the stock market would have given me. In addition to that, the tenant paid all of the expenses because I got a positive cash flow. And so my advantage in putting my money into real estate and getting a 21% return versus an 8% return in the stock market, well, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? So... Let's just take one more look at this. If we continue to do go through this, 
I would have saved $10,000 per year of my money for 10 years. That's, that's $100,000 of my money that I put in and I get 46 back. But in the real estate side, I put in $25,000 up front. Not 100,000, 25,000. My rate of return is 20%. And I can continue to save, as I've just said, I can continue to put the money away and then do this again. At the same time, my real estate investment is continuing to grow for me and to create advantages for me. So what are the five advantages of real estate? Number one is appreciation. It goes up in value and it tends to go up in value over time. If you're buying a single family house, it goes up in value based on the market. If you buy a duplex, triplex, fourplex, it goes up in value based on the rents that you can get. So if the rents are continuing to go up, so does the value of your investment. Here's an example, because if we just take a look at this chart right here and look all the way over on the left hand side, you see that in the year 2000, the median rent, now median means half is above that and half is below, it's medians right in the middle. And you can see that once we got to 2014, look at what happened to rents. $1,700 a month is the median rent for properties. Okay, so the rents continue to go up. Advantage number two is monthly cash flow. Now, in our book called Hold, we don't recommend buying a property unless it has a positive cash flow. That's really, really important. But what does that mean? That means that the tenant is putting money in your pocket. A complete stranger, likely, is putting money in your pocket every month, monthly cash flow. Advantage number three is leverage, okay? And so what is lever? If we go back to physics, a lever is a tool that allows you to do more work with the same amount of effort. And so uh, in, in uh, real estate, we use mortgages or other people's money to allow us to buy a bigger asset than what we could afford to buy with the cash that we have, okay? And so that's a huge advantage. And interestingly, in real estate, when you're using other people's money, they'll lend it to you for a long period of time, a 30-year mortgage at a low interest rate. And so another advantage for real estate, you can't borrow money to buy a stock on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage, okay? The fourth advantage is equity buildup. Now, what do we mean by that? We mean that every time the tenant gives you a rent check and you pay your mortgage down, and it's two, three, four, five hundred dollars per month of principal reduction, your equity increases even if the property never went up in value. But if you've got appreciation and equity buildup at the same time, you saw the numbers, a 21% return. Let me give an example of the worst case scenario because some of us are afraid to do this. What if the property doesn't go up in value and, 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 and I'm not sure if I should buy real estate. So let's just look at this and let's just say you decided that you're gonna pay $200,000 and buy a rental property and you hold on to that property for 20 years and 20 years later, you sell it for 200,000 because it never went up in value. Oh my gosh. I'd never want to do a deal like that, would I? Well, what's the rest of the information? Let's say you did a 20% down payment, okay? 20% down. Over that entire 20 year period, you had a zero cash flow. What zero cash flow means is you didn't put any money in your pocket each month, but it didn't take any money out of your pocket each month. The tenant paid all of the expenses and paid off that mortgage in a 20 year period of time. That's an 8% return on investment. Sound familiar? Even a real estate deal that you wouldn't want to do and probably wouldn't buy gives you a 20% or an 8% return on investment. So advantage number five is uh, tax advantages. Number one, all the mortgage interest you pay is tax deductible. Number two, depreciation, which the IRS says you can pretend like you're losing money every year, like the investment is going down in value every year, and you can write that off on your taxes, even if it's not going. Property taxes, they're deductible. Repairs that you have to do on the property, those are deductible. Expenses, insurance, advertising, the utilities, management fees, even travel to go visit the property, it's all deductible for you. The biggest tax deduction at all is that if you decide that this investment could be better served by going to another real estate investment, you can use what we call a 1031 tax deferred exchange and not pay any tax at all. Can't do that with stocks. So, 
The five advantages of real estate. I hope you appreciate this video. Our goal is to help you build financial independence with real estate. And we are the resource for people building that financial security with real estate at TCT Property Services. Thanks for taking the time to watch and please let us know. In fact, like this video down below. Give us some comments on what you think about this video. We appreciate you watching. Thank you. Thank you.